Your Majesties, Excellencies, Ministers, Members of the Clergy, Fellow Belgians, Friends from Hawaii, Fellow Americans, and Fellow Citizens of the World. I am honored and humbled after a Mass as glorious as the one we just witnessed to participate in the unveiling of this statue to Father Damien. I am honored and humbled to represent a country I have long loved, in a country I am growing to love, in a city tremolo, and honoring a man, Father Damien, that even the angels love, and on behalf of a president in whom I believe to in my core. I've recently arrived from 27 years in Washington, D.C., and what I've learned so quickly is we share so much in common. And we, in fact, share statues of Father Damien. For I have visited the beautiful bronze statue that sits in Statuary Hall in the Capitol Building of the United States in Washington, D.C. But more important than bronze and molds, we share the legacy of Father Damien, and therefore we share the values represented by that legacy. You see, statues are one way that men and women remember history, and that history remembers great men and women. History remembers all sorts of men and women, and we build statues to many. History remembers and we build statues to the truly brave, explorers or war heroes or great leaders, and yes, to priests, who set out without full knowledge of where they are going, but rooted in the belief that the justice of their cause will protect them no matter where the path leads. History remembers the truly righteous, men and women who understand that rewards can never be measured by what someone has collected, but what they have given back. And history remembers and we build statues for the truly wise, for inventors, for scientists, for leaders and for priests, who see a little further down the road and recognize that building a better tomorrow is the most important contribution we can make for mankind today. Father Damien, of course, was all three, and far more. A brave explorer, an ambassador from your then fledgling country to what would someday be part of my country. A healer, a righteous man, a hero, and a saint. But Father Damien was first and foremost a teacher. A teacher for us all, a teacher for our children. You see, history remembers such men and we build statues not simply to honor the past. Statues are also about the present, and even more importantly, about the future. By reminding us from where we have come, they remind us who we are and where we need to be going. By honoring the past, we pledge to try to replicate such action, such bravery, such righteousness, to build a better future like the righteousness of Father Damien, who by crossing the water, when a beautiful farm awaited him here in Tremolo, by choosing poverty when relative wealth awaited, by reaching out endlessly to a fellow man in a different land, by insisting despite pressure that he would bury all who died, regardless of faith, nationality, or religion, and by dying doing what was right, Father Damien has taught us all. He has taught kings and ministers, presidents and ambassadors, mothers and fathers, grandparents and children. He has taught Americans and Belgians, Catholics and Protestants and Jews. He has taught the people living in Hawaii and in New York and in Flanders and in Brussels and in Wallonia. He has taught us all that we are in this together and that to get it right, that to sail rather than sink, we have to get it right together. That we will all find health, safety, and prosperity, or none of us will. And that what happens in Washington or in Paris, in Honolulu, in Africa, in Afghanistan, or in Pakistan, in Mechelen or in Bray, where I traveled my first two weeks, or in Charawa, where I traveled this past Wednesday, or in Molenbeek, where I visited the community center yesterday, what happens no matter where affects us all, whether we live in Tremolo or in Washington or in Brussels or in New York 
or in Africa or in Flanders or in Wallonia, whether we live in Tel Aviv or in Rabat or Ankara, that this time we have to get it right. And we have to get it right together. Father Damien taught us that we all must become better listeners, better learners, and better partners. And not because it's politically expedient, not because of what we will get, but because it's the right thing to do. We share the world's problems. Father Damien taught us we must share the world's solutions. And Father Damien taught us the most important lesson, that the problems that we face that unite us every day are far greater than the differences and the prejudices that previously divided us. That as our world gets flatter, we must become better neighbors. That given our mutual interests, our mutual respect, no voice of opposition, no effort of extremism, no economic hardship, no threat to our health, to the climate of our soul, or to the climate of our product, of our planet, can ever be allowed to separate us again that there are no zero-sum games. We will rise together and all prosper, or none will prosper. And we'll either leave a safer world for our children, or we will have failed. And that we can never compromise the values and principles we hold dear for our short-term goals. So what would be Father Damien's leprosy colony today if he were still alive? For what mission would he leave this idyllic farm in Tremolo? Would he be the champion of the cause of AIDS, of fighting drug addiction, of poverty in third world countries, or of poverty in cities where we today have 50% unemployment? Would he be a champion for our safety and security, whether challenged by health or by extremism? Father Damon, of course, would be a champion for them all, for a better planet tomorrow than the one we found yesterday. He is and will always remain an inspiration to Belgians, to Americans, and to us all, and particularly to those in Tremolo and in Hawaii. And so when I found out about the Father Damien Mass today, I called back to my White House. I called to see if someone who grew up in Hawaii, our President Barack Obama, knew about or had thoughts of Father Damien. And I learned, in fact, that even from his youth, even as a little boy, he had been taught of Father Damien. He had long admired Father Damien, and he considered him an inspiration. So from Hawaii to Washington, from the White House and our embassy, we thank the citizens of Tremolo, of Belgium, for your son, Father Damien, in 1840, and for your friendship and your partnership in the 170 years since. Thanks so much.